Welcome back to the Lance Wallnau Show, and this is the place that I love to go when I need to get a, um, a sense of what's happening in the world around me. I like to get a hold of people that actually have an antenna up that's getting the right signals. And one of the great people that I like to talk to about those things is Mario Murillo. Mario, thank you for joining me. Once again, we always have these great conversations. Yes, we do. Do you remember all the healings that are happening in these? I mean, when you go back, uh, when you, uh, how does that work for you? Do you, do you, do you recall them all or are they, do some of them have to kind of like, do they all blur into a similar thing for you? Well, I'm, I'm really shocked at how many of them I remember. I mean, and it's, uh, it's really startling and, you know, you, you got to realize people are sitting there. You look at them. You tell them what's wrong with them by the power of God, and God gets all the glory. And I've never been able to stop being amazed at the glory of a of countenance of a person who is sitting there dying, and you, you say, this is what's happening to you right now. And their eyes get big, and the look on their face is just amazing, indescribable. Now we, so it kind of it gets branded in your. Soul. I, I want to play one right now, right out of the right out of the um, beginning of, the, of our interview. Um, but I'm trying to figure out. I looked at this earlier before we came in the studio, live, and it looks to me like she was trembling. I couldn't tell whether she had a neurological condition. Or whether it looked like the more you were praying and ministering to her, the more she was shaking, and it was the power of God. And I'm wondering if you can right. narrate. We got some people are going to see a podcast. Uh, they're going to hear a podcast. They won't see the image. So can we play uh, video one? And this is Mario ministering. I think this is Ocala. Yes. At, at, okay, our Ocala event that we did. And, and let's go see what, what is happening, and maybe you could kind of clarify a little bit what you recall taking place and what drew you to this woman when you were on the platform. Let's go ahead and play it. I didn't come down here just for those people. You are the primary reason that I came down here. I know that you believe in miracles. I know that you've seen them. And the, the doctor's report, it's just not fun to read this stuff. It's terrible, especially when they tell you we've done just about everything we know to do and we can't help you anymore. But I want you to stand on your feet and I want you to look at me and I want you to have no fear. Your nerves, your muscle, your brain, your legs, your stomach are all being healed. All of it. Your balance is being restored. Your strength is coming back. This thing in your digestion is being healed in Jesus' name. One of the problems you've had is walking. Walking has been very difficult for you until right now. And right now you're like a rocket on a launching pad. And the power of God is coming on you. And I need you to make room and I want you to give me your hand because here you go, right now. You better make way. This lady's gonna move right now. I want you to come with me right now. All right, here we go. Here we go. She couldn't do this before. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. She's about to take off. She starts running. This is Tell us about that lady. What can you remember? Multiple sclerosis. Ah. And her husband, uh, we, we spoke later. And it, it, it's all about balance, weakness. But she also had something in her digestive tract that was eating away at her weight. And uh, so she, she had weakness. She had muscular, neurological uh, problems with motor skills. And it instantly vanished. It was the power of God. There was no doubt about it. 
And uh, in that particular instance, is uh, there's a wonderful book that, thank God, has been re-released called The Real Faith, Dr. Charles S. Price. And Bill Johnson wrote the foreword for this release. It, Destiny Image got a hold of it because it went into public domain. But it comes on you. Dr. Price said, a blanket of faith will come on you. Where we get in trouble is when we try to induce something to happen. When I'm standing there in the video you saw, uh, Lance, that blanket of faith came on me. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known anything. I wouldn't have known what was wrong with her. I couldn't have helped her. But the other gift of faith is what fell on her because she was very afraid, very scared, very reticent to agree to what was happening until a moment. And you could, if you, if you replayed it, you'd see that moment. You'd see the actual moment when that woman went from fear to faith. And it wasn't her faith. It was the faith of Christ. And suddenly, everything started working right. And she took off. But I, rem I, rem I, I, I you remember you saying it because I thought that was interesting. And uh, I always love doing this with Kim Clement. We go back and I, I get to ask some questions because I'm looking at the uh, what is happening in the spirit as though it's almost like uh, an architecture. And you're saying to her, don't be afraid. And remember, Jesus would tell people, fear not. And the reason he was saying that right. was because they were afraid. <laughs> and he was basically saying, I get that. I'm not out of touch with you. This isn't weird. Right. I'm with you, honey. I'm with you right now. Now, don't be afraid because. And then it creates that opening where suddenly she was like able to, in a sense, catch the trapeze you were throwing at her to go to the next level. And, and so when that happens, the fear of God comes on you. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, I live for that moment. I'm powerless. I'm helpless. I can't do anything until that power of the Spirit of God in a blanket of faith comes on me. I'm, I can't do anything. And, and let me tell you, I know it is not me. There's never been a person who's been more uh, self-aware that it isn't him, it's God than I am, and I know that. And sometimes people will look at me and they'll say, I just love the way you give God the glory for everything. And I'll look at him and I say, my friend, listen to me. I do it out of fear because I know better than anyone in that room that I'm not doing this, that it isn't me. And, and I'm not just giving God the glory to worship God, but to clarify for my own sanity's sake, this is not me. Because I'll tell you, imagine walking out on the stage before that moment of faith and you look at the need and you say to yourself, I don't feel a thing. I'm going to preach by faith. I'm going to, I'm going to expect a miracle. But I learned watching Catherine Kuhlman. I would watch her in the Shrine Auditorium when nothing was happening. And my heart went out to her and I thought to myself, I don't know that I would ever have the courage to stand in front of an audience that's expecting healing and feel nothing. And she would stand there and she would say, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. She learned how to wait. She knew that God was not going to fail her. And that's how I feel when I stand on that stage, believe me. I look out at the audience, and all of a sudden, God will say, get off this stage, walk all the way to the back. There's somebody back there, and as I walk to them, the story will unfold. But he gets all the glory. All right, now stop right there. That's the part that I live for, that little moment right there. So, and as you walk towards them, so when you're ministering like that, you're, you're flowing at the level, it's almost like the headlights are giving you a couple of feet worth of clarity. It's as far as you can go. But you'll continue walking in that and maintaining awareness of what's going on, keeping the, the, the group focused. And as you're moving towards that person, the, the clarity starts to come. So in this case, you uh, were getting words about her condition. 
while you were in yes. proximity to her or way back on the platform? When did you get that insight? What I got was that lady right there, go down there. And on my way, the story would unfold. Hmm. And I got one, one symptom. So totally one thing, something wrong in her stomach. And that's when the rest of it came. Because these two illnesses, the neurological, muscular, motor skill situation is totally separate from the digestion issue. They're, they're, they're like two different worlds. They don't have anything to do. There's no uh, overlay. So it's not, you have this and let me expand it out. It was this and then God said this other. And, and it's absolutely uh, certain because I know his voice. Folks, and, during, and the walked, oh. during the daytime, we're having an explosion prophetically of God's activity unfolding the roadmap in America, what's happening, where the battle lines are drawn, what the enemy is trying to do, how God is countering it, and how certain counties and states are mobilizing in order to build a firewall to resist the devil. Then in the evening, there's, uh, it shifts from a prophetic conversation into a, an evangelist with signs and wonders. And the two come together to create this explosion. We call it the Courage Tour. I want you all to go to thecouragetour.com right now because we're going to be all over the place. We're looking at, the, we're, we're putting these dates down now. Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Georgia, New York, bam, bam, bam. Go to thecouragetour.com. Make sure you're aware of when we're going to be coming to a location near you because these are shorter bursts. Some, some of them we have a couple of days, some of them are just 48 hours. But bam, bam, we're going to be doing day and night. And I believe that we're going to see a shift in America because we're going to see an increase in the supernatural. Mario, I believe this time around we're going to see even more people delivered, more people filled right. with the Spirit, more healing. And if it's possible, uh, we had a 1,000 uh, per altar call or a 1,000 a night, it seemed, coming forward. And some odd nights, you had three altar calls. It was the strangest sight I'd ever <laughs> seen. I, I was saying, is he doing another altar call? And then a weird thing would happen. Another wave of people came forward, like, what's going on here? I think it was Colorado Springs. Why are we doing two or three, two or three altar calls in an evening? What, what does that tell you when you see something like that? You know, the things that happened to me during the 10th crusade that I'm, I, it's very difficult to talk about because I wonder if people are going to think I'm crazy. The reason we do multiple altar calls and, and one that you were a part of was in Hanford, California, when it was 38 degrees. Right. We had no heaters and uh, you, you were bundled up <laughs> and uh, on the front row. And we had multiple altar calls because... People are dealt with by the Holy Spirit that are driving by and are told, get off the freeway, go over to that tent. It's halfway over, but I want you to go. And I'll watch these people showing up. And then the Lord will say, now bring in the harvest again, multiple times. And, you know, I really want to say something about the, the Courage Tour that I haven't had a chance to say. I never before understood why we are blending political activism with signs and wonders. But Peter was doing that very thing in the fourth chapter of Acts. When the gag order came down from the magistrates in the Sanhedrin, they said, you will not preach in this name. That is a political decision. They shut down the church and told the church to shut up. That's what we're experiencing right now. Peter's reaction is very important. He says in prayer, and you read it in the, er, the er, earlier broadcast that we made, he said, Lord, behold their threat and grant to your servants boldness. What Paul, Peter wanted was boldness. What Peter was asking for was boldness. He said the preaching can't stop. Nothing can stop the preaching. If you look now, the crosshairs in modern church is against the pulpit. Do not preach this. Do not preach that. Do not preach the other. Peter recognized that the one thing Satan wants most is for the world to hear a veiled gospel, a partial cure, a 
a message full of apology and with the fear that we might offend you. Peter didn't want that. He wanted to preach boldness. Here's what he said. It's important. And the way it reads in the original language is even more powerful. He saw signs and wonders as a vehicle to boldness. He take us to boldness. Take us to boldness is what he's praying. Lord, grant to your servants that with all boldness they may preach your word while you or as you or by the means of signs and wonders. So here we have it. Paul, Peter is asking for signs and wonders for boldness to stem the tide of political evil. That is the courage tool. In a, that's it. Hmm. Stem, stem the tide of political evil by a bold message that is given its boldness, derives its momentum from medically verified healings. That's what we're doing. I am, you know, and I'm working on something recently that the Lord's been dropping into me. So I was, you know, I'm around a lot of prophetic folks and real Pentecostal folks, you know, they have dreams and visions and it's amazing. I mean, you know, they have dreams prolifically and uh, prophecy. And uh, I've been, I've been um, driven, Mario, to a, an unusual place where everything that we're doing now, I'm doing by the word of the Lord without the stimulus package of a prophecy, a dream, or an angel talking to me. And the other day, I actually, uh, I think I may have been, I've been wrestling with the devil a little bit because I started thinking, what if, and this thing is really materializing. I mean, they're coming after us. They're doing movies on us now. Hollywood knows we're there. They're coming, Rolling Stone magazine. They're starting to put the, the crosshairs on this tour. And uh, I said, Lord, I sure hope this wasn't presumptuous. And the Lord that fast brought back to me something. He said, for God is at work in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And the Lord said, do not think that you need to have. As a matter of fact, it's more by faith when you hear the still small voice and you instantly obey than when God has to send you that angel. I remember Joyce Myers uh, one time said, you know, when I was younger and I had to do a big offering, I needed a lot of confirmation. Me and Dave used to pray about it. and We'd be praying over that $500 made a big, well, you know what? When you get more mature, you don't need to have God pull you aside, give you a confirmation, a vision, or see that number show up on the door of your room and say, that's the amount I'm giving. Because God instantly can say it because you've already been there and you instantly obey. You don't need all that fanfare. And I don't know why I'm telling people this, but it's not necessarily the case that you're going to have to have an angel manifest for you to have the breakthrough that you need. I believe the Courage Tour is your rendezvous with an atmosphere where you'll step into your healing, you'll step into your deliverance, you'll step into that adjustment because America shall be saved. And God's good grace is the tour is a place to do that. That's why you got to go to thecouragetour.com, check the city that's nearest you, and, and by the way, contribute to it. People, we're, we're putting this thing on by faith. People, people have no idea, brother. You and I, are they don't realize I'm a minister. I'm a 501c. People are always coming to me for money. I must have the glory of, uh, of infinite resources on my Jewish soul from my ancestors. People are coming to me all the time trying to help me fund them with a project, a business, a movie. And I have to remind them and say, I'm living by faith. Do you know that? But then again, God makes me throughput for other people. But this is an atmosphere where I think the Charles Price gift of faith is going to be coming upon people in these meetings. Don't you believe that? I do believe it. And, I, and you know what? I, I so believe that people are going to watch their own gifts, their talents, their abilities. You know, if I look at the American church right now, there are so many who know and love God in America, but have no idea how to express themselves in this setting. It's like the devil has, has been so far ahead of us, step after step after step down the road, that we have lost sight of the fact that God builds specific weapons for specific times. And you can be a weapon of choice. Meaning, you don't look like what people connect with being a vessel of God. You may not match that profile at all. See, what we're doing 
is we're bringing together elements that have never been together. The supernatural gospel of Jesus Christ, the prophetic insight to the culture and arming people with information. Bringing those together, it's just going to be firepower. It's going to be an explosion of, of relevant, undeniable, supernatural power and wisdom. It's an irrefutable argument. It is. And it, I know, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it's true. I mean, we're going to have some of the most... Laura, Laura Logan was just up in the Capitol in front of Senator, uh, Senator Johnson of Wisconsin, by the way. He had a committee exposing NGOs that are funded by the left in 501c3s like Media Matters, which is which is like these Soros and other deep foundation, deep pocket, extreme radical organizations that are policing the internet and policing programs and, and taking people off, intimidating them, bankrupting them, robbing their voice, and they're masquerading as 501c3s that are out fact-checking. And in fact, it's a minority of people that are doing it. And, and But these organizations are very powerful. Laura Logan is willing to come out on our tour Michael Flynn, who was locked up in jail. Remember, they're going to jail, they're going to imprison Peter Navarro. They're trying to do it to Steve Bannon. They're trying to do it to Donald Trump. Wake up, America. It's not like these things are going on over there. Well, maybe if they just were a little bit less controversial, they're coming by increments to a theater near you. And they're coming to your, your church is either going to have to go woke and capitulate or it's going to be, it's going to be, have its tax exemption revoked. Trust me, this is the, we're at a time now where we can still shift things around. If, if, the, if the unafraid majority of Americans respond to the voice of God and to the invitation of the Spirit, I believe we can literally alter the trajectory of America from going down to having a, a, a breakthrough. And I think the Courage Tour is going to go down in history as, as one of those factors that is not because of us, but because seven states, um, 19 counties are going to respond to the move of God and they're, go they're going to be receptive to what God's about to do. Does that make sense, Mercedes? Yeah, I think so. I just want to say, too, I mean, outside of the two people you listed, I've got Lou Engel, who's going to be at them, uh, Jenny Donnelly. We've got in Georgia... Pastor Miles Rutherford, who's a Georgia pastor, is seeing a huge move of God down there in Georgia. Uh, Bill Federer, <laughs> I'm talking to the Bartons. So, and I, then, I put put John uh, Pastor Alan Chuko up there too. Mm -hmm. He's he's been he's been standing up in the uh, with the school system. Yeah, we need waiting, to get him. He's I'm willing to do it. Just waiting on some confirmations from him before I throw him up there. But um, and then also for worship, we've got Catherine Mullins, who's powerful. Uh, if you he's been with us before. in all of our great miracle. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, crusades yeah. with the fire and glory. I just want to kind of like highlight everybody that will be there. But I did want to, I want to go into, wade into some headlines here because I got to have to do this this week. Um, a fake poll. Now, they have these organizations. I want, I want to alert our people out there. These, the left will create. We got to learn from them. They're so brilliant mm -hmm. at what they do. You have to admit it, the, the devil is good at his craft. I mean, you have to admire s s competency when it's there. Uh, it's like when you get a drug dealer saved. Like I heard you talk about your security team earlier when I was on a, we were having a break. And you've got former criminals. They make the best security because oh, yes. they can read that crowd better than, uh, you know, anybody else because they're just looking for their friends. <laughs> they didn't get saved, yeah. right? Public Religion Research Institute, American Values Atlas. Oh, if that doesn't sound like something suspicious right there, the Public Religion Research Institute American Values Atlas. They're doing a survey. It's, and, and so the survey, sure enough, Mario, what is it telling us? Most Americans <laughs> don't like Christian nationalism and its influence is growing every day. This says, and why does it matter? Because these Christians are, are calling for more religion in the public school, banning books, even suggesting that democracy should die. Now, right away, I know this is a left-wing funded goofball organization yeah. selectively trying to get data to put it in Axios as though it's research. The big picture here has to do with 7 out of 10 Americans say they are rejectors 
or skeptics of Christian nationalism? Well, first of all, they create the word, then they splat it on us like, uh, like spaghetti at an Italian restaurant, and then we're smeared with it, and then they point at us and say, uh-huh. As, as, we aren't calling ourselves Christian nationalists. I mean, I'm always having to figure out, well, what exactly is it? Because we didn't, we didn't say we are, we're, we're that. In Calif but, we're, but by the way, the states, Mario, that they're working from is California and New York are a major part, part of their survey. <laughs> uh, but obviously, if you and I, where, where were your revivals so far in California and New York? They didn't go to Boctavia and do the survey there, I'll bet. And, and Hanford uh, in California, they didn't no. go there, did they? No. Anyway, we're out of time, but I want to get a final thought because I'm, I'm jabbering and I always like to have you kind of conclude the conversation. What are your thoughts? Okay, my thought is on CNN, a lady got up and was talking about Christian nationalists and said this, these people don't believe that their rights come from government. Mm -hmm. They believe their rights come from God. She stated that as a pejorative accusation of the, this movement, not realizing she was directly quoting the Declaration of Independence. That's this mind freeze, this, this woke mind freeze is that far, that they now are saying the Declaration of Independence is a threatening document, and these people believe their rights come from God. Yeah. And, and, and the conclusion of that is, if you were on The View... I really believe Whoopi and the other ones would be nodding their heads sympathetically. You know, these Christians actually believe that God gave man rights instead of government gave man rights. Mercedes? I just think, I just think it's going to be really funny when all these Muslims and Jews and Hindus find out that they're also Christian nationalists because they believe their rights come from a higher power as well. So I guess everybody who has a faith in a monotheistic mm. God... You're a Christian nationalist now, sorry. Well, it's evidently, it's, it's, as Mario pointed out, it's uh, two-thirds of America doesn't like the movement, and it's growing every day. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, look, we're going to be back again with Mario Marillo. We're going to keep you up to date. Don't forget the CourageTour.com, pastors and leaders. Look at the site because we've got brunches, special gatherings for pastors that Mario and I are going to be meeting with right. separate from the event because we really do believe that God has a word for his, his leaders and, that, and we want to be responsible in sharing what we're hearing and hearing what God is telling you. So uh, thank you, Mario, once again. Thank you, Mercedes. And we're going to be back again on another episode. Stay up to date with us, lancewallet.com forward slash podcast. Then help, uh, help us stay on the forefront of shaping this movement, which we're not calling Christian nationalism. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Did you enjoy this latest episode? Please remember to share it with your friends because the more knowledge you have, the better equipped you are to navigate the world.